Let me bring it up here. It's not, you know, Ethereum is, uh, we have a symmetrical triangle. It's, it, you could argue that it's, uh, would be a, a bear pennant, but now it's moved beyond three weeks in duration. So we move out to a symmetrical triangle developing here. We'll see we're sitting on the, the lower trend line of symmetrical triangle. Uh, so far, there's been a little bit of push, but not too much off there. No impulse. You know, the, the one update we saw well below the average volume on the 50 day. Um, you know, it's a wait and see. I think you get, you go, you're trade below the low here at 2308 you're looking at a test and down here to 21 7 or 82 and then things kind of open you have the february two th or february high which is about 2042 i believe would be your next support and down and then on the upside really uh you have a pretty tight support here so you could be buying against this trend line you know maybe doing a pilot buy and obviously looking forward to come up here, which would give you what a 15, probably a 15%. Yeah, 14, 15% gain. And then of course the 50 day moving average comes into play above that, which was resistance in early June, resistance in towards the end of May, and then we had it again off the bounce in May 23rd. So everything's very well defined here. You could buy, use that as your stop, or even if you're a little more ambitious, you can come down to, to this area as your next stop. So there are clear support levels along here to watch for. Once again, allows you to be pretty disciplined with, with your, if you're buying against support. And we know what we're looking for on the upside to break free after, after this, really, if you look to the, to the decline, there's really no price congestion here that would suggest a lot of difficulty to rise back up to the all-time high, which is like 43.84. So, but I don't suspect that's going to happen soon. Looks like we could be pushing out to the apex again. If that's we're about 80 percent now, so we're at the limit, uh, historically speaking, in terms of the optimum point for a breakup from a symmetrical triangle. Once you get past 80 percent of the distance from here, probabilities of, of a strong move decrease exponentially until really. When you get here, it's a very low probability opportunity. So that's something to keep an eye on as well. If the environment in the market continues the same, I would suspect we're just going to wedge out to there and, and, and leave us with really a very low probability opportunity. That's interesting. Very, very interesting. Are you seeing anything else on the on the higher, on the lower time frames? Not too much, really. You'll see you, you have the, on the weekly, there's really nothing. And, and the monthly, you have that wow. long-legged doji there, which is uh, a very rare, <laughs> rare event. In fact, I don't know if I've seen one of those in, you know, in the last few years. Whether it's equities or currencies, it's uh, pretty impressive. So you could, it tells you that there's a, there's a lot of equilibrium at this level, which would be the a, a close was uh, 2776. So. You know, that's a key level to watch for in terms of, I would say, a weekly close uh, would be important there. Um, and then go from there. But it is impressive. It does show a lot of equilibrium or indecision on behalf of buyers and sellers around the stock. Wow. Wow. I see. I see. Yeah. I, I, let me let me share my screen real quick if you're done, uh, Sheldon. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I, I also see a lot of indecision in uh, in uh, in Ethereum, uh, but to me, uh, like the the best way to to portray this indecision is using the twelve hour chart. As you can see here, uh, it, the prices have been mostly contained between the one hundred twelve hour moving average and the two hundred twelve hour moving average, right? So for me right now, basically a uh, uh, a potential twelve hour candlestick close above or below these price points will tell me where this thing is going to go next right uh if we fail to hold above support right above the 200 12 hour moving average then i'm looking at a potential downstream to two thousand dollars if that doesn't hold then i'm looking at no i don't, I don't yeah i'm looking at basically yeah i think like two thousand will probably hold but if that doesn't hold then i'm maybe looking at one thousand six hundred dollars um <clears throat> based on the on the price congestion right here right yeah so, kind of that aligns pretty close to that february high 2040 yeah i mean it just you'll see you know, there's a lot you can go back to through april there we it was undercut and, and then once again we had the big 
big days on the 23rd and 19th, but they both closed back above that level. So any close below 2042 uh, on a daily basis, and then you're looking for lower prices. Yeah. Kind of the probably the 200 day uh, simple moving average. Yep, yep, right here, definitely. Um, so yeah, kind of, kind of like right here. I don't know what's going on right now. It tells me like too many people are logged in right now, but, but, but yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, right. And 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 in the upside, of course, right. I'll be looking at a break of the fifty level, um, per the Fibonacci indicator, right, and the one hundred uh, twelve hour moving average, which also coincides with the with the setup trend line by the TD sequential indicator, right. So basically, a close above this massive cluster. Of resistance that I'm seeing right here, right, could potentially see this thing reclaim three thousand dollars and potentially go to around uh, three thousand five hundred, right. But again, we'll have to like wait for a clear uh, and decisive close above all of this resistance that we see right here. But uh, but from an on-chain perspective, Akash, are you seeing anything in particular? From an on-chain perspective, no, uh, it was pretty much the same. I'm still seeing uh, a lot of Ethereum uh, going out of the exchange uh, wallets, which is really good. I don't see a lot of buying from uh, the whales between holding between uh, one mil to ten mil coins. Right? Can so, you can you share your screen, please? Yep. Right. So. I don't see uh, whales uh, doing anything. I think this is the most correlated uh, uh, whale wallet. So th there's nothing happening here in terms of whales. Uh, ex uh, exchanges are seeing uh, Ethereum move out of it, which is bullish in a sense. Uh, I don't see a lot of uh, whale transaction counts, which could signify local tops uh, anytime soon. And uh, the 30 day and the 30 day and the uh, 365 day. So 365 day MVRV shows that there's a lot of room to move lower. Mm -hmm. Right, so it shows there's a lot of room to move lower. We haven't uh, hit the, the zero line in a very long time, right? But, uh, but the 30 day MVRV is already in the opportunity zone. So uh, from a very short term perspective, right? I am still looking for it to go down, like I explained with Bitcoin. And another important thing here is we haven't, so this, from this price area to this area, there's a lot of unfilled gap here. And I would, I'm expecting Ethereum to explore uh, this area and then go higher. And interestingly, this also coincides with uh, this zone here. So I am still short term bearish on Ethereum, but once we clear these uh, levels here, right, there's a lot of highs uh, that are found here. So once we clear this and this, we probably, uh, like Sheldon mentioned, right, there's really no resistance up to this point. So basically, you're, you're, waiting, you're waiting for a clear cut of $3,000. Yep. But uh, this, uh, we could probably shoot up here if we first explore this area here, right? And if we try to go here, then we're probably going to see something like this happen and then go higher. I'm not sure. I, I really would love for Ethereum to explore this area. I see. I see. This one, right? And uh, another interesting observation here is right, and from here, if you check this out, right, the 50% move, uh, the 50% Fibonacci for this move coincides exactly with the top here, right? So once we clear 28.96, I think it's a, a really free way for Ethereum to head higher. I see. Which will be that one then? Three thousand six hundred would be the the first target, or or, or what yeah, would be like your first target? This would be my first target. Okay. Uh, once we clear this level here. Yeah. Once we clear this, then it's uh, again the swing highs as usual, not a lot. Cool. Yeah, but I think uh, filling this gap would be really important. And then we, we'll, we're probably going to consolidate here for a while once we fill the gap. Yeah, this gap is... Uh... 
All right, so once we fill this, we're probably going to see a lot of consolidation here. Oh, my bad. So good. And right, so we'll see consolidation and then probably reach for these highs and these highs. I see. I see. So, so yeah, so basically to, to sum up here for, for Ethereum, we're, we're basically seeing a, two crucial levels of support and resistance, right? Resistance will be like around three thousand dollars, right? I mean, there is a confluence of, of resistance points right there, right? And only yep. a, a a decisive close above this confluence of resistance, we can have like throw it up to uh, first three thousand three hundred and potentially three thousand six hundred, right? Uh, yep. On the on the downside, right, we're looking at if it basically closes below two thousand four hundred bucks, at least for me. Um, mm -hmm. Right, then I'm looking at a potential retest of the two thousand dollar support level. Yep. Yep. That, that's right, right? Yep. Pretty much sums it up. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So, so yeah, Akash. Now that you're sharing your 